video of spinning. I'm not getting anyone in the, in the way. I love your necklace. Yeah, it's fine. 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 Uh, this is a uh, traveller. There's a traveller. There's actually uh, yeah, actually there's seven so. traditionals here now today. Wow. Traddy, 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 yes. traddy, 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 traddy. Yes. And you. Yeah. Look, one of the top and topless. Right, so. Now, ladies, are you ready? Right, so. Mm. Hold it up. Mm. Hold up this guy. This one guy. And then do a little clockwise spin for me. Clockwise, clockwise towards you. Clockwise towards you, yeah. Yeah, clockwise towards you, clockwise towards you. Clockwise towards you. Do two or three like that. Oh, that's a lot. Maybe this actually. Did you? Yeah, that's good. Yes, Okay, so I have, a, I have a reason why I've not been filming, but it is ridiculous. But I also feel like you deserve to know why I've not been recording podcasts. And it's because I've watched all seven seasons of <laughs> Gilmore Girls in the past three weeks. And I've literally had zero time for anything else. And I've finally finished the final episode of season seven. And, and now I have to wait for James to get home from work in about like an hour <laughs> to watch the, the final four episodes, which is like a year in the life. And I'm so excited. But I thought, this is ridiculous. I've had this set up ready to go since about 12 o'clock since I just got off the the morning Sunday morning virtual knit night and I've just been watching this <laughs> I <don't> know <laughs> it's okay <laughs> so <laughs> hello and welcome to this ridiculous thing that I call Babbles Travelling Yarns Podcast. I'm your host, Grace. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Vanna Willowmeal, and you can find me, you, you can find my virtual knit night channel. Um, I say channel, it's it, uh, in my Instagram page as Babbles VKN. Babble v Babbles VKNs, yes. And I've also just this morning set up a Facebook page for um, all the people who would be interested, uh, for basically for all the VKNers that have come online because what we do on the on the virtual knit nights is people log on and then we just get talking about everything. And a lot of, there's a, there's a chat bar that we post links to. And a lot of the stuff we talk about is just fascinating. And I've been gathering all of these links from a, like a lot of the virtual knit nights and there's just no concrete place to put them and I had been emailing them out but um, I feel like it's not really a, 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 a good way to keep a conversation going which is the whole point of the virtual knit nights. So I've set up this uh, Facebook page called Babbles Virtual Knit Nights. So if you're interested in joining pop over to the Facebook page and that is a way that you can uh, keep up to date with what's happening on there and also gives you access to all the other people and maybe if you want to have a discussion about uh, maybe just setting up a virtual knit night with the, with the, the Babbles VKN's room code then you can do that no problem as well on the Facebook page. So if you're interested, if you can't make one of the normal uh, the eight o'clock slots on Tuesdays and Saturdays or the 10 o'clock sl slot on Sundays, um, it's open the whole time. So you can basically organize to go on and use it as a virtual knit night group as well. And the Facebook page I'm thinking is going to be a really good way for people to just communicate and um, ask if anyone's up and willing to go for an impromptu virtual knit night and everyone can see then. So I really would recommend joining that Facebook group. I'm going to, because I post in a lot of 
of different places. I will be posting on um, on Patreon, and um, but I will probably not be um, updating the individual groups on Instagram as much. Uh, the small little chat groups that I have because there's like six of them and I can't, I can't keep up with that. So um, I think Facebook is a, is a better medium for that, which is weird because I've not been on, on Facebook that much. But anyway, I'm there now. <laughs> so come join. Um, it is a closed group. You have to request access. And if I recognize you from the virtual knit nights or if you contact me asking if you're interested in come in joining, I am more than happy to um, add you. However, um, and also people who are already on there can also invite their friends if they want. But I would advise, you know, I would, you know, it's for knitters and, and that sort of thing. It's a, we're a very open group. Um, and I love what we've created and I love the chats that we have. And I want to, everyone to keep enjoying it. So make sure they're knitters or creators or, or, or crafters or, and, uh, we take everyone from all shades of life, as long as they're nice. <laughs> yeah, so that's the big news. Um, I also have some other fabulous news and you've probably seen it at the start of the episode. I went to a wonderful um, uh, International Spin and Public Day up in uh, Glore, which is the art centre in Ennis. And it's wonderful and fabulous and I hope you enjoyed that video. Now, let's start on with the knitting. So we'll launch right into the knitting hopefully as five minutes five minutes talking is grand so I've got two big projects and one small little project and I also have a couple of giveaways because it's been so long and I've been so so lax I'm so excited um we're also running our Outlander Cal and I don't know if I've shown you the prizes I think I have already but I'll just show you one more time so we've got a bag to choose from. One is for me and one is for the winner. So I haven't decided which one yet, which one I want yet, because they're both so beautiful. Look at this little, oh, turn it around the right way, Grace. Lovely little treat. Um, uh, it's from Long, Long View Creations, who is Let Me Create Today on Instagram. Ooh. And she has a, an Etsy shop. These bags are so beautiful. And I've also got a beautiful kit from the Sixpence Moon, the Moon and Sixpence, the Sixpence Moon on Instagram. It's this beautiful castaway kit. Oh, it's just so stunning. And some gorgeous stitch markers from my friend Marion Prince. Um, and they're oh, I've been using it. I've been using my set uh, on my um, jumper that I've been working on, and they're just so nice. So. I, oh, I, I haven't decided whether to split up the prizes or keep them all together in a big bundle yet. Uh, but I'm pro I'm going to be adding in some prizes of my own um, too, some skeins of yarn of my yarn uh, as well. And yes, and because of Crazy Town, Gilmore Girls, I've, admission, I've not started watching it yet, okay? I am terrible. However, I have started knitting on my Fergus socks. And <laughs> so funny story, I was bringing up um, all of my stuff up to the to the spin uh, spin in public day and um, I was putting everything back and, and then suddenly I couldn't find my socks for like a whole week and I was terrified because James had gone up to the National Pl Plowing Championships in Ireland and yes, it's a big deal, National Plowing Championships. Ireland. Thank you very much. Amazing. So, um, yeah, I couldn't find my, my socks. And then I thought they were in the car and he was gone for four days. And then I came back down and I was like, oh my God, everyone's doing really well on their Fergus socks. Laura from Woolly Wolverine has finished hers. Who else finished hers? I can't remember. Oh, Eleni. Yeah, I think Eleni had finished hers. Oh my God, they're so pretty. And I was so jealous. And I, every, every time someone talked about it, I was just getting super upset. So... <laughs> Anyway, I found them in all of my spinning stuff because apparently I just chucked it all in because, yeah, when you're spinning all day, you just have to take some knitting just in case. Grace, 
I'm just dangerous, dangerous times. So I have the I have the socks in um, a beautiful Mina makes bag, which is super rare now because she's not making them anymore. And I have a tiny little stitch marker there from Barbara from Knitting I Love. And the wool I'm using, the yarn I'm using is Ellie and Ada in the shadow kit. So they come in I've split these off into two separate balls now, but they come in uh, a little mini and a 50 gram skein. So this is actually 25 grams because I've split them into two because I'm doing two at a time socks as is my standard. So this is the kit, super handy. So I'm going toe up. I feel like I'm speaking really fast. Sorry if I am. Um, I probably am actually because James is due back in like 15 minutes and I need to put on the Gilmore Girls immediately. Come on, girls, come on, girls, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So I started off on the toe and I was talking to Anna because she's so wonderful. Oh, there's also a big percentage discount. I think it's 25%, 20%, 25% off if you buy the pattern and you use the code SOSNIC. So give it a go. Amazing. So... This is what I've done so far. There's so, this is happening and it's making me so happy and I want to knit on nothing else, which is very disappointing because I have other things I really need to knit on. Every, I'm in love with everything I'm knitting at the moment. In love with it. So I'm using Higher Higher Standards and I'm kind of, I gave away my Higher Higher Sharps to somebody who was learning how to knit. And I think that was a bad idea, but I can always buy some more, so that's fine. But um, just because the needles were super, super sharp. But with these twisted stitches, I think a sharper needle would have been very smart. But that's okay, I can get some more. I'm doing fine. I'm doing absolutely fine with these. But, oh, I just love feeling and touching. Oh, and I'm just in love with this pattern and this color and the yarn and the, oh. Ellie and Ada in the shadow set. Just Ellie and Ada, anything is beautiful. People have been informing me that I am an enabler and I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. So I've actually got a couple of things that I really need to show you. And one of them is upstairs. What's wrong with me? I'll go get it in a minute. I probably won't. Um, meh. So I'm in love with these socks. In love with them, in love with them, in love with them. I decided to go for a small or a 64 stitch because I feel like I always overest. I always make my socks too big and I don't realize that they stretch and they fit my feet better if they are if they have negative ease. And it's taken me ages to realize this, but anyway. So I went with the 64 stitch sock, which is still actually like, it's probably my correct size, but the twisted stitches have, a, uh, I'd say they'd have a little bit of a um, negative ease again. Do you know what I mean? Cause it's kind of, they're kind of pulling in. So I think it's gonna be fine. I'll find out. I'll find out and I'll keep trying them on as I go, which is the great thing about two at a time socks. So yes, the pattern is Fergus Socks by Anna Freyberg on Ravelry. And I love it so much. Okay, so that's the whip number one. Whip number two, since I have it out, hanging out. Um, so I, I'm i almost, oh, I should have really finished, but I didn't, that's okay. If, um, I've almost finished the body. I'm on the ribbing of my Beauty and the Beast colorwork sweater. And I've decided to add a little detail at the bottom. I don't, you probably can't see that very clearly, but it's just a little, a little thingy. I was going to join in some more colors, but I think keeping it quite simple is fine too. And I thought, I was thinking about this gray, but I thought that was not obvious, like it, you wouldn't be able to see it really. It would be too subtle. Um, it took me ages. I ripped it out like three or four times trying to decide. I did take some inspiration from the fabulous Jen from, hang on, I'm gonna get this wrong now. Knit, <sighs> knit, full stop. It's not knit, share love, cause that's clear divine. Knit, love, wool, I think. Knit, full stop, love, full stop, wool, full stop. And I can't look it up cause you're in my phone right now, uh, so yeah. But she makes incredible colorwork yoke sweaters and I love them so much. So this is my, whoa, 
this is my color work sweater so i'm not knitting it as long as most of my other sweaters uh, tend to get um my other sweaters tend to get to about there like a little bit farther down but i kind of want this to to sit the rib to sit right on because my that's my crest that's my waist right there so i want it just to kind of sit there with a nice kind of small like tight rib and it should be okay yeah i'll be fine um and then i'll start on sleeve island so i'm knitting this this is uh, an old a very old whip that i started in october 2016 when i went to anna maltz's the sweater spotters course on winging it from the top down so we basically we we measured ourselves we did a gauge swatch um i did a gauge swatch on a completely different yarn and that was no good at all but anyway <laughs> it worked out and it seemed to be fine and um i taught i learned about short rows so i popped in some short row shaping here so the top would be um higher than the front i think that's how it goes yeah and then it was like mainly this was assessing how many stitches i needed to include from my gauge swatch to go around both shoulders and then um where i wanted to start how big a neckline i wanted and then how many stitches i needed to increase and then divide them with lots of maths lots and lots of maths and then as you go down farther you calculate how many stitches you have on there and then kind of say okay is that divisible by five four six and then you kind of make up a uh, chart to go in that little box and on this little um, flower one I kind of made a mistake <laughs> when I was going round and I realized oh I actually have don't have enough for this flower so I put in a little bit of two hearts there and I think I then also made a mistake uh, uh, twice so I had to put in hearts here too <laughs> but it all worked out in the end I think it's cute having little hearts scattered around so that's the back that's right in the center in the back and um, then this one is on my right breast over here, on my right breast page. So that's nice. And then I got stuck for months and I just didn't pick it up because it was super hot and sweaty and sticky in, in Sydney when I was down there. That's when I started this. And then I picked it up and I started this leaf print and then this kind of edging. And then I separated for the sleeves and knit the body in some fabulous stash that f my VKN friends decided that was perfect. And this is, uh, the, the colour work is knit out of Morris & Sons Estate 8 ply, which is a 100% wool DK weight yarn. Um, and then the rest of it is knit in this De Toco station for Briar Patch Yarns in New Zealand. So it's Australian and New Zealand wool. And it's also DK weight, available in 12 fashion colours fashion colors they are amazing colors by the way if you want to have a look they're stunning oh, so nice and it's 100 percent perindale lambs wool uh and this is the uh p810 which i think is the bay of islands color i have tons more i think i'm gonna have enough for another jumper like look at this I've got this much left and I've got two two of these. So this is the yeah, Bay of Islands bluey green. So nice. And she separated up into like three different packages to um avoid getting like that postal charge thing which was so like kind. Thank you so much. Because if you if something's posted to you and then the whole total value is over a certain amount of money, I think it's 25 euros or something then you get charged another 25 euros on top which is ridiculous so she split up the the packages which is like a great way to get around that i don't know if that's legal or not i'm not sure <laughs> the worst person ever Shh, don't tell don't tell on me <laughs> i'm trying to give service service and functions to people and i want i want people to go over because they're such good customer service as well fantastic people so I'm loving it and it's going to be hopefully done for Christmas it's going to be my Christmas jumper it doesn't really look like my Christmas jumper but anyway so this jumper was inspired by Beauty and the Beast because it was all the rage it was all coming out back then um all the you know the the reenact the redoing of 
Beauty and the Beast with Emma Watson and stuff. So I started off knitting this kind of, and I don't know why these colours remind me of Beauty and the Beast. I don't know. I have no idea why. But they do. Garden. Maybe it's a garden theme. And the whole idea of Beauty and the Beast is that rose, is the rose bushes. And that's the original Grim isn't it grim fairy tale? It's some fairy tale anyway, was that the father had picked a rose to take back to his daughter and that was the reason why he was kidnapped. He picked a rose from the beast's garden. So um, these kind of tall panels here reminded me of this, the long windows in the castle, in the, in the library. And then I went down here and I did a little rose. I'm going to go back in there and um, duplicate stitch on a bit of a pink um, stitch that's fine and then I put in a proper rose and then a leaf pattern and then some more of these kind of long kind of um, drip drabs in there and then down here <laughs> we were on the VKN and I decided to put in this and one of the one of the girls said it reminded her of Lumiere <laughs> so <laughs> I, I kind of get it like it's got this kind of stitch at the top and then it comes down into a kind of a candelabra thing it's quite cute I like it. I like it a lot. So, yes. So that's my colorwork sweater, my Beauty and the Beast sweater. Um, I'm getting on well with that. But the thing that I've been trying my hardest to continue, I don't know if I'd finished the body of it yet, but it's my So Faded sweater with the beautiful... Um, uh, Nora George Yarns Yarns. Uh, the, the, what's it called? The Mrs. Weasley's Nip, Knit Club Yarn. <gasps> oh, good. That was terrible. Awful. Awful terrible. So the top one is Seed from Hedgehog Fibres. And I bought that to go with this kit, which had, um, not kit, but this set, which had, which was part of the Mrs. Weasley's Knit Club round four. So this is Veritaserum, Felix Felicis, and Polyjuice Potion. Polyjuice Potion. Whoa! Anyway, so <laughs> they're getting a bit squishy now because I've used quite a lot. Although I think I'm definitely gonna have loads left. So that's exciting. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Maybe, oh, a baby, a pint-sized would be so cute. I have a couple of babies, but I've got so much else to knit. I just don't know. I just don't know if I have time to do anything for anyone else. <laughs> so this is how far I've got. So I finished the body. <gasps> Gosh, that does look like it's, totally pooling at the bottom but it doesn't look like that in real life oh my goodness wow isn't that amazing how it does that when i'm looking at it straight on it does not look like it's pooling crazily like that why does it do that on tv oh i love it anyway i love it it's beautiful and stunning and i love it, it looks like it's dipped to dyed oh i'm in love so the sleeves, I'll just show you the one. So the sleeves are not going to be um, as long as the body because I've started blending already because I'm kind of sick of sleeves. So I started blending them, <laughs> but they're coming out lovely as well. Really, really pretty. So um, when I was, I can't remember, I I think it was Marsha, but Marsha from Fairy Little Podcast, she always, uh, you know that, uh, the uh, so when you split for the sleeves, you put in a bit of waste yarn and then you pick up the, the, the stitches when you're about to knit and you're supposed to take out the waste yarn, but she, I think she leaves it in and it's a really good measure for where you are. Now, I don't know if I even needed to do this because I do them two at a time to make sure that they're the same length because I think that's easier for my brain. Although, so if you were doing them one at a time, it would be handy to leave this in so that you knew how many rows you'd done. So you could just count the rows. So that's very, very smart, I'm thinking. But I'm not sure if I need it because I've not been using it. But I'll leave it in until it's finished. I feel like it's gonna be satisfying to take out. So anyway. <laughs> so yes, let's talk about doing sleeves two at a time, shall we? 
So I'm doing the magic loop like you would socks. Um, picking them up at the start was a bit tricky and doing um, decreases is a little bit tricky because you kind of have to like, well, I suppose I could have put in markers, but I'm terrible. I just kind of go with it. It's going to be under the arm anyway. Who's going to notice? Nobody. Nobody's going to notice or care. So that's fine. What is the big problem is tangling. I'll tell you now. So I feel like I should have stopped when I was about to start the sleeves and separate them into two balls. Actually, I think I should have started that from the start because I have been, um, when I knitted the body, I actually knit from the front and the back, I like knit alternated from the top and the bottom of each row to avoid pooling as much as possible. Um, which doesn't seem to have worked. <laughs> oh well. I did it as well with the green. Um, and that was a bit challenging. So color management has been a bit tricky on this one. Um, because just it's it's beautiful yarn, absolutely gorgeous yarn. But it's hand dyed, so it's really difficult to um, kind of guarantee what it's going to be like, you know? Because I'm because there's vastly differing stitch counts on this. You know, the stitch count around the, the belly is not going to be the same as the stitch count around a pair of socks, say, because it is sock yarn. So yes. I don't know how I can how I can explain it. Only to say that I tried my best to avoid pooling. Um just because I, I don't I didn't want it in this particular project. And to be honest, I don't think it's that bad, although I can really see it now. That's so annoying. So I didn't do any um, alternating for this section and I could see these bands. They're, they're to me anyway, they're a little bit obvious, but. So this band here and this band here. And then I said, okay, I'm gonna alternate now for this section, which seems to have worked quite well. But then down here, it's got this flash here and it's got this flash here. And I did notice it really obviously in the ribbing, but I was like, hey, that's okay, I don't mind. Um, but I'm just seeing this part here, but in real life, it doesn't look that mad. What is going on? It's not mad, it's fine, it's totally fine. You know, I think it's just the camera picking up the bright greens like way more than the subtler colors. So when you see it in real life, it's it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous, if I do say so myself. Uh, yeah, so, so I alternated. So as well as alternating with the ball, with two balls, when I was switching, when I was fading in the colors, I was also, every second line, I was pulling from the inside and the outside of the ball. So I was switching... So I was essentially doing a four stripe jumper the whole way down after I got past that second section, that second color. <sighs> and then of course sleeves, which is like pretty much the same thing actually. You always have two on the go for one for each sleeve and then um, you're alternating the color. And I'm not gonna be pulling from the inside of the outside of the ball for each. You know, that's just... <laughs> so I'm pulling the on the inside and the outside, inside for this sleeve, outside for this sleeve. And um, yeah, so... I won't be able to alternate more than anything else, but I think they're coming out perfectly. There's, they're not pooling or anything like that. So that's lovely. So pretty, so nice. So yeah, I'm probably going to do three quarter length sleeves, um, the same as my drift card, drift sweater, because I, I just wear it all the time. It's so comfy. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try that and then all I have to do, so that's another few inches, maybe six inches and then a rib and then all I have to do is pick up the collar and I'm done. So I'm hoping to have this done for my Atlantic Knitscapes retreat, which I'm heading up to on Friday. And I'm really excited about it. So I'm hoping to have this done for that. I, oh, I would love to have it done. I've got a billion ends to weave in, but that's okay. So there's my so faded, so fady and lovely. I'm obsessed. Obsessed. So there are my three projects, which I'm actually working quite well on all of them. 
So that's nice. What I need to do, what will I do today now? I really do need to work kick ass on these sleeves now and try and um, make a dent. Although those socks are now so addictive because I've just picked them up again and I haven't knit on them in ages. But no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Now, there are some promises that I made which I have not kept because that's who I am and everything's gone a bit mad in a good way in work. Um, so I've not really had a chance to cast on my beautiful Nora George Thistle colorway uh, for The Hitchhiker. And um, I've kind of been half thinking of, st I really want to start the Voyager Cal, a Voyager Cal uh, a mystery knit along for the Outlander um, giveaway, but I just cannot find the right yarn. I just, oh, I cannot like, Maybe I should just dye the right yarn. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, so I've got this beautiful. So it asks for like a mini set or a gradient set of 20 gram mini skeins each. So a five party of five would be perfect um, or any scraps that you have at home and then a variegated skein. And I'm just thinking I'd love to use this in it because I feel like this is just the perfect skein. But I don't think these work with it. It's purple and green and then blues. Mm, so I'm not sure. And then I've got this purple, well, I've got this, and then I've got a kind of a brownie. That could work. I don't know if it does work. Sorry, let me turn around. So I just, I just don't know. I mean, could it work? I'm not sure. I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't know if it's pop, this is poppy enough. And I haven't tried to dye gradient sets yet. Oh, my life is so difficult right now. I just don't know how I'm gonna deal with it. I have also got like really crazy rainbow gradients, or a rainbow mini set from pink or green elephant yarns, hand dyed yarns, but I don't think that goes either. No, 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 no. Oh, so I'm just stuck really so and then I was looking at this one and I really quite like this this setup but I'm thinking this is too much of a tone or not enough of a gradient because the gradient apparently works or not gradient uh, a variegated yarn works a lot better apparently in the in the mystery knit along which four two clues have already come out for and I'm and I'm seeing everybody's progress and I'm dying to get started on that first section oh my gosh it's beautiful and I'm just like this is where I'm not sure I'm so paralyzed but then I also have to get my jumpers done and I also have to get the socks done so I think that my Fergus cow is going to be my Fergus socks are going to be my main um outlander cow project oh, but look at this this is nooch fiber in the leather smell leather chair colorway so nice so yes oh a couple of things have arrived and i'm going to run upstairs and get one of them because it's very important that you see this because it's so bloody beautiful okay so a couple of amazing things have arrived for me and sometimes some things arrive for me and I I get so excited and it's so wonderful and sometimes I forget to talk about them on the podcast and I'm so sorry for anyone who has sent me something and I've not talked about it. I really, really am sorry. Um, sometimes I forget and I'm a bad person. No, I'm not a bad person. But sometimes I just get really, really busy and then I forget to write it down in my notebook. But I've got <clears throat> two people I want to talk about today. So... First person is Linda. Now, Linda texts me. <laughs> Linda sent me a message and she is so, so kind. Um, she wanted to send me something um, and I will never be able to pronounce this, but um, she is uh, Dutch Indonesian. And when when um, she was young, her parents used to give her, used to give, oh, it's Dutch. Zeke Hai Saigurchis sickness gifts. <laughs> so she decided to send me on some beautiful wool. Now this is not just any old wool, you know. This is 
and has an amazing story behind it too. So it's called Twirl Ditto and it's Wild Garden Surprise and it's part of the Fibre Shed. So this is some yarn. Oh, I just, I'm in love with these natural colours. So Surprise, who was, I'm assuming, a sheep, was an orphan. So special. A surprise to find her at all. This yarn is surprise, blended with alpaca and mohair, dyed with flowers from our garden. So that's this one. So it's free range, natural and humane. And it's very local to Linda herself. And it's just wonderful. Local fibre, local dyes, local labour. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm so excited. I don't know what I'm going to make with this yet, but I'm really delighted to get this and this is the the natural with them um, so this wasn't um dyed at all so oh, it's, it's just so beautiful so this one has a bit more kind of gray browny colors in there oh it's just a really really beautiful gift thank you so much and you're so kind too kind too good to me thank you Thank you for your sickness gift. It definitely made me feel better. You're the best. Um, and another thing I ten, uh, I went out and I bought was a, so I've been actually, let me just get everything together. I've been um, kind of hankering after these for a long time, possibly since <sighs> Fibre East, I think. So I saw these first at Fibre East this particular creator and I was blown away absolutely blown away I was like oh my god that is the smartest thing I've ever seen I want them right now and I had no money at that time but that's fine so I said I'd wait I'll wait it's fine it's totally fine I'll wait I'll wait I'll wait and then the waiting became too much and I decided now now is the time now is the power and I've actually tidied up all my stitch markers, which means that everything is really difficult to get to because Grace is super smart. Boo. Okay then. So these are the most intelligent, useful stitch markers I've ever, ever, ever seen. They're from a shop called Yarnistry. You may or may not have seen them. She's a British um, creator. And the first thing I saw was, and I've, I've filled it out, was this little name tag. So it's for festivals and I've put my Instagram name on there and also my real name, but I might, I might take that off. It actually comes with a permanent marker as well, but you can take it off with an alcohol wipe or something. So it says, hello, my name is me. Uh, the pattern is this and the yarn is this. So you can just put it on your jumper so people can see and then you can start up a conversation and uh, if it's for it's maybe for people who um don't want people to touch <laughs> or who, who feel a bit awkward asking if they love a pattern they can just look at it and go oh my god I must look that do you know so that's really nice as well but also it's a great and I had to get mint because mint 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 so that was lovely I had to get this amazing gauge gauge measurer and stitch needle thing jigger where's the where's my give me a needle a needle my kingdom for a needle okay here we go oh goodness this is the best thing ever i've used it 15 times already what size is that what size is that is that a four it's definitely a four is it hang on four millimeters four millimeter hang on wait no yes it is a four millimeter it works this is so great you can get these in any color you want i think she's got like a laser printer laser cutter or something amazing so her shop is yarnistry shop on etsy look at her little <laughs> it's just the cutest cutest thing ever so adorable so not only that but I also bought two sets of these little stitch markers. So these stitch markers are genius. So they have written on them little um, stitch abbreviations. So what's that one? Knit two together, start of round, make one left, purl two together, um, for right side. You know, it's just like 
everything you need to make, you know, it has all the separate ones. However, sometimes you need to make one right and make one left in twice, you know, when, when you're doing Magnum Seas or something. So I bought two, <laughs> I bought two sets. They're so cute. So I'm really excited about using these. I plan to use them a lot. Genius. So another thing I bought from her all at the same time, because you know, was these amazing things. So you know when you have a massive shawl on the needles, 400 stitches or so, and you've got to count those bloody stitches. Well, I was putting in like a stitch marker or a progress keeper every 50 stitches or so, or 100 stitches, just to kind of make sure that when I go back and check that I can be like, oh yeah, that was right the last time. Okay, good. It's just really hard to keep track. So what did she do? Only she, she's printed out these really cool, oh, that's probably backwards, really cool stitch markers that have like numbers on them. And she does like all kinds of numbers. She, she does custom orders and everything. So this is 100, uh, I have to do it in order now. So it's 50, 100, 200 and 300. Cause hopefully I'm not going to have anything that's more than 300 stitches on the needles. Ha ha ha. I hear you laugh. Yes, I know. I'll just order more when I get to that stage. <laughs> oh dear so I am in love with this shop I've already put it up on the Facebook page because I feel like I've been talking about nothing else on the Instagram on the vir virtual knit nights and it's just lovely so oh oh godness oh godness here we go so that's what I have been at. that's my acquisitions my stash acquisitions at the moment I, I'll just show you those two at the moment because they they're just, they came in the post and it was really exciting. Um, I've got a couple, so I've sent up a massive box of yarn up to the Atlantic Knitscape um, re knitting retreat this weekend with a friend of mine. So I don't have any of that yarn to show. However, I'm going up next weekend and there's another um, kind of a marketplace. So I'm thinking um, anything that's left from that, I'm gonna have a shop update the following week. Um, I'm not sure what day yet. It will probably be on Sunday so I can ship out the stuff on the Monday, um, possibly. So it'll be like Sunday two weeks. So that's exciting, something like that. Yeah, I don't want to have, I don't want to have it on, I think having an update on Friday is a bad idea because then I have the whole, although it does give me the weekend to pack and ship. However, it does like add on extra time. Oh, it's all gonna be the same in the end, I suppose. But yeah, I want to thank everybody who has supported me and who has um, placed an order. <laughs> I can't get over how much I love you. So I, sh I, I dyed up 50 skeins of uh, my Merino sock yarn. And most of that has gone up to Edinburgh yarn, or gone up to um, the Atlantic Knitscapes retreat. And anything that's left over will be going to the shop in about two weeks. Let's just say that. However, I couldn't stop dyeing because when the dyeing was the dyeing pot was out, the dyeing pot was out. So I'm just going to show you two more um, colorways which I dyed up um, in the last couple of days. I love them so much. So the most recent one which I dyed up on the virtual night last night was this purple, and I'm not really a massive purple fan, but <laughs> I really like this one. So this is done on my cotton socks, bless your cotton socks base. And I'm, I'm really quite liking solids at the moment. I think you can do so much with them. Um, they are really, really attractive. And But this cotton has this really beautiful marled effect. So I've, I've dyed up five of these. I think this would look just amazing in, I don't know what, a jumper or something. Yeah, I just really love the marl effect on this bad boy so that's lovely and then on the same base I dyed this kind of bright lemony lime color no names of course because I'm like the worst with names and I'm really liking this and this was a leftover from the yellow uh, the, I dyed a bright egg yolk yellow for a friend of mine she wanted a bright egg yolk for her for a shawl and I was like oh goodness so uh, yellow is quite difficult to exhaust out of the water and I really don't like throwing um, 
die down the sink. So I threw in another batch of uh, five skeins to try and soak it up. And then it, it kind of turned this really, really pale yellow. And then I was like, oh, no. then I threw in like a ton of like this green. And then I threw in a couple of other colors and I came up with this and it exhausted completely out of the bath, which was so awesome. So whenever I dye yellow, I might have to dye this as well because it's so pretty. And that's the only way to get the yellow out of the bag. <laughs> which now you all know. So that's exciting and wonderful. So I really enjoyed uh, dyeing up those two. These will be going up into the shop in about two weeks as well when I get the rest up. So I've got five of each of these, which is super nice. So pretty times are ahead. Pretty times are all around me all the time. So it's a beautiful day outside. I think I'm gonna go for a quick walk before James gets home. And um, I need to go uh, to the shop. So I'm just going to go off and do that. And I'm sure I've forgotten one billion things. One second. Oh my gosh, giveaways. I've got um, Black Tie Affair by Jen, um, who is Genuine Knits on, actually, I think that's only on Facebook. But she is the host of the Colour in Life podcast with her son, John Michael. And it's a beautiful wrap. It's a lacy wrap. It's like a, a rectangle, lace and cables. Oh, it's so beautiful. Uh, so I will give it away on the Facebook group. All you have to do is go over and join and um, you'll be in the running. I'll just pick from the members that have been, that have accepted an invite for me or who I have accepted. So I'll, ex I'll pull that before the next time I do a podcast. Good plan. I'm so sneaky. Um, then Barbara, Knitting I Love Barbara, who also has these really cool tags that I want to get a whole set and I need to get hold of her, but I think she's in Poland at the moment. Um, she's got these tags that you put on your project bag so you know what's in them. So like it says, it's a shawl, it's a hat, it's a sweater. They're so cool. It's like a, a ring pull really good go over to her shop and have a look i'm dying to get my hands on a whole set and i want her coasters as well because they're also needle gauges and who can i i need more needle gauges in my life people anyway that's beside the point barbara also has a new pattern out with beautiful pattern it's the asphodel hat pattern and it's based on a type of leaf it's like a lace, like a i think it's a lacy lacy hat pattern it's so so beautiful so in order to win the asphodel hat pattern by barbara uh pop over to my ravel group ravelry group i'll open a thread there and you i will pop in a question i'm not sure what it's going to be but um yes i will pop in there and i have one other beautiful pattern to give away but i'm going to save it until next time you'll have to tune in next time Okay, so I'm going to head off, do, do my bits and bobs, and I will love you and leave you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being patient and kind and lovely. And um, yeah, see you next week. Bye.